The reason that this test is concerning to me is that in groundwater, there should be no fecal contamination from people or from animals. And a positive result indicates that this well should be closed until it can be remediated. So the results of the test are shown when we put a black light on the panels that were filled with the water. And what we have in this light box, our cardboard light box, are the samples. This is a day after the analysis. So when we, at 3 o'clock yesterday, we took these out and did the counts. Anywhere you see fluorescence, that means that there are enterococci bacteria present. Our biggest fear when we started with all of this water control and to try and increase public awareness as to the situation was, in fact, that there would be leaching taking progress and would contaminate our groundwater. This, unfortunately, confirms our theory. This highly contaminated first sample that you see was no shock that there is bacterial elements in there because that's where we're dumping directly our sewage water. The second tray that you see there came from the ravine, from the dip there that we filmed where we took the second samples from. And you see it's slightly less, but still definitely dominant in the feature of the coloration. And when we come to the well water, we should be seeing nothing. We should be seeing clear water. This is water that's used municipally for animals, for groundwater irrigation. And in some cases, people still do drink it. It's not a smoking gun. This is a bullet leaving the barrel. And we really need to do something about it very quickly. And that's why we're going straight back to this well to take the test to confirm this situation before we actually go public with what is, unfortunately, a crisis point in our water monitoring. We're back at this well. The water's running to make sure that we get a good flow. It's nothing that's been standing in the pipes. And we're back here because of the devastating results of the first test, which showed that there's enterococci, which means there's a clear case for leaching and contamination. Dr. Peachy will now take a second sample and we'll verify our results. And I have to say, this is really devastating. Right. And the reason we're taking three is to be absolutely sure of the evidence that we've found. Now the tests that we're doing uh, are, are an accepted test by the EPA uh, and uh, in some circumstances have closed beaches. And certainly if the second set of tests that we do come back positive, it will mean that this well, probably along with many others, will have to be closed. We've now come out to uh, another well. Uh, if we look sort of east now, we're approximately, let's say, two and a half to three kilometers away from the ocean. The worry for us, of course, would be if that same bacteria had found its way to this particular well as well, then, of course, we would have a much more serious problem on our hands. We are hoping that we find a clear negative response from this water. Uh, but it's definitely something that has to be checked in order to, for us to establish how bad the contamination of the groundwater is. Dr. Peachy is now taking uh, the coordinates of the area. Again, these bottles are sealed. They've come from the United States as sterile bottles, and so no prior contamination uh, can be there. And, uh... Okay. Okay. Well, I was expecting that maybe there would be less bacteria further away from the ditches, but in fact what we see here is more bacteria in the well further away. The, um, the panel in the back is from our drinking water, and I ran that as a negative control. Uh, you can see that there's no cells glowing, there's no contamination in the drinking water here at the lab. This is the well that was closest to the ditches, and it's got um, similar to the level that we saw the other day. This is the one further away, and it's, it's much higher. All of the large cells are glowing, and only a few of the small ones are not glowing. So this is gonna be a, a 
a much higher number from what we were seeing uh, out of the, uh, at the first well. According to the EPA, uh, these samples would be enough to close a beach, um, stop water being used if it was in a water supply. It would be a state of emergency. And it's my conclusion that this is very indicative of a state of emergency in Bonaire. It's been a long road, and it will be a long road, not just for Bonaire and the Antilles, but for the rest of the world. Proving that the groundwater is contaminated has done no one any favours. It's only proven the fact that we cannot ignore nature. And as a great friend of mine once said, if you put economy before the environment, you'll end up with no economy. The tests that were just taken uh, over the last few days have horrific implications. And it's not lightheartedly that I say it's a state of emergency. Even according to UN regulations, every country, autonomous or non-autonomous, is entitled to fresh drinking water and the protection of its groundwater. The method that was used to establish these values in our testing uh, was interpreted by a system called the InterAlert system from IDEX laboratories in Westbrook, USA. It's, an accepted, it's accepted by the US as a, by the United States in, in Environmental Protection Agency as a quantitative test for determining the numbers of colony forming enterococci bacteria in a 100 milliliter sample of marine or fresh water. Up to 36% of that CFU value would be the criteria for safe water to bathe in. In our second well, our values were as follows, 571.7 CFUs per 100 milliliter, with a variance of 755.6 CFUs per 100 milliliter. The indication of this is that it's drastically polluted and could, could cause serious harm, both to the livestock and the people that it's surrounding. Is that a state of emergency, or is that a state of emergency?